Hi, this is Dr. Graves. Welcome back to part two of the video tutorial series for the Hollywood Arsonist Lab. In this segment, we're going to learn how to calculate a standard deviational ellipse and a median center, and then we will use those calculations to help us identify a likely suspect from the list of suspects involved in the Hollywood arsonist uh, spree of 2010-2011. First, launch the ARC toolbox once again, and from the list of spatial statistic tools and measuring geographic distribution toolkits, select directional distribution or standard deviational ellipse. Click on it twice, double click, and this dialog window will appear. Once again, select from the drop down menu, input feature class, the arsons, December to January. Note the output ellipse feature will be saved on your drive space on the virtual software in the virtual software lab servers. It will look similar to this. The ellipse size of standard deviation is fine at one standard deviation. So very simply just click OK and the tool will begin to run. You may notice it down in the lower right hand corner, an indication that it's running its standard deviational distribution or standard ellipse tool worked in the lower right hand corner of the window and you'll notice a hollow oval encircling a number of the arsons. Some are outside, some are within the standard deviational ellipse. This is similar to a standard deviation in regular statistics but it also takes account of the directional bias in the point pattern on the map. Still around 68 percent or one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below the mean center will appear inside this oval. Okay let's turn off for a moment the major roads layer and make um, sure that you have the known arsonist layer turned on. Those are the little gas cans. And to help us see those more clearly, I'm going to turn off the arsons layer. And note that there are four arsonists within one standard deviation in terms of space and, and one standard distance of the mean center. These are now your four primary suspects. You are asked a question to identify the zip codes within which they reside just to make sure that you are using the software correctly. You may click on the identify tool and click inside that uh, identifies the standard deviational ellipse. You may want to click that off and then uh, identify the north, the holly, the zip codes that are associated or not associated with these four suspects. Answer a question, and then return after you've answered a question. Okay, so because this mean center is somewhat isolated and the standard deviational ellipse is narrow, not very circle-like, it suggests to us crime geographers that there's something maybe keeping the arsonist from setting fires in the middle of his or her crime area uh, or near the house, and that the pattern suggests the arsons are skewed along a north-south axis that trends a bit to the west. We want to know why and perhaps we need to make an adjustment to our calculations to take into account this somewhat odd result. So here's how you're going to do this. Click on the box to, uh, next to the word terrain in the table of contents to activate the terrain layer and now you can see the mountains. And if you zoom in to the area around this median center, 
that you may notice that this is not an area with a great deal of population. I'm going to click in and zoom into this area up in the, the mountains. I'm going to turn on the arsons layer itself. Note that there are some arsons here, but not very many. As I zoom out, we may begin to understand how the physical geography of Los Angeles, particularly the Hollywood area, played a role in the distribution of fires that were set during this crime spree. Near the mean center, we find that there were not many locations or homes in that area that were easy to victimize without being noticed and to find uh, the type of houses that fit the pattern of apartment buildings over carports with cars. These incidentally are called dingbat apartments. Uh, the arsonist began to have to travel further away than he or she might have wanted in order to find suitable homes to catch on fire and this seems to have created this elliptical rather than circular pattern of criminal behavior. So, in order to find the average location or the middle in a data that set that has been skewed, as this has been by the mountains, that we will want to turn away from a mean center to a median center, much in the same way that we would use a median in a list of numbers that were skewed by some outliers. And we do see some outliers up here all the way uh, near Pacoima. You may want to stop for a moment and answer a question or two um, from the Moodle area before we calculate final statistic called median center or you can just wait. To calculate the median center, click once again on the ARC toolbox icon. Note that the list of tools uh, reappears. And in this instance, double click on median center to activate the median center dialog box. The input feature class from, is selected from the drop down menu once again. Again, select Arsons, December through January. The output feature class will be saved in your file folder on the virtual software lab server once again. We have no weight field or case field, and we don't have to select an attribute field. Click OK, and the tool will run once again. It takes a moment, uh, but a new dot will appear. This instance it's in uh, yellow. There is the median center. You may uh, click on it to change it to yet a different uh, pattern, perhaps this one. And this indicates the median center of the pattern of crimes committed. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and we're going to examine the relationship between this point here, which is the mean center, and this point here, which is the median center, which is accounted for the skewing in the data caused by geographic barriers and the road network. At this point, we can turn off the arsons layer and begin to consider uh, two main questions which of these suspects, based on the geographic pattern of crimes, is most likely the, our number one suspect, and two, at what intersection should we erect a barrier or a traffic stop in order to inspect likely suspects. It's at this point analyzed all the data you need in order to answer the last few questions. The one thing that you're going to be asked to do is to use the measuring tool, which is this tool here. Click on it on the toolbox and click once and then 
pull your cursor between any two points. In this case, we see that it's 1.59 miles between the mean center and the median center. If uh, you want to change the measuring type uh, or the units in which area is measured, go ahead and do that. Change it perhaps to meters in this case, and now we see that between the mean center and the median center is 2,564 meters. You are going to uh, measure the distance between various suspects and the mean center and the median center to answer the final questions. That ends the video tutorial part two for the arsonist lab. I hope you enjoyed this exercise.